Hello everyone. If you're in the security field, especially on the offensive side, I guarantee you have heard of CTFs or capture the flag games. These are basically little games where you log on to a server or you download like a virtual machine image or something like that and you have to hack into a computer that you're allowed to hack into is the basic idea. So it can be a website, SSH server, whatever way they set it up so that you get to hack into something legally. Uh, a very popular one for beginners is called Bandit. Now there's plenty of videos out there showing you how to do this, uh, guiding you through, you know, hacking into these and blah, blah, blah. Uh, a side of it that I think is very underrated is coding your solution. What do I mean by coding your solution? I mean that after you solve it manually, you write a piece of software, which is what we're gonna do, that automatically runs the solution, gets the result. Um, often the result of one challenge is required to get to the next one. So for example, for level two, you need the password for level one. So they're progressive, right? So you can have one piece of software that gets the password for the first one, uses it for the second one, beats that, beats that. It's kind of a different way of documenting your solution. Instead of just taking notes, uh, which is what a lot of people do, or making videos, you can write a script that does the solution and that's sort of your documentation. That is your note, right? It's also just a good way to practice code. I think there's a lot of offensive security people out there who just aren't strong software engineers. You learn software engineering stuff, you learn about functions, you learn about whatever, and maybe you just don't have the time to practice all this good stuff. When you're actually on a job, you're just you know scripting away as quick as you can to get it done. And coding these is a great way to practice coding. It's very practical. Even for a lot of beginner coders, I feel like you get a lot of systems coding knowledge that you might not otherwise get. So with that in mind, let's just go ahead and log into the first level manually so we see how it's done. So, sorry, I'm, I'm already in it. <laughs> it was a SSH. The pass, the username is bandit0, at, and we have to give it a password. But first I'm gonna give it a port. The port is 2220. Okay, once the password, which is bandit0. And we're in, so that's the first level. Let's go ahead and program that. We're gonna use Python. Specifically, I'm using Paramico, which is a Python SSH library. Uh, it says right here that it can't find it, but it's totally installed. So I don't know what's wrong with my, uh, my Visual Studio Code setup. There's other libraries that do the same thing. You don't have to use Paramico. You can do it however you want. I like it. I feel like it's easy to use. It's a little low level. There are some other libraries built on top of Paramico. Basically, we set up an SSH client. That's so that we could be connected to different servers at the same time and stuff, have different clients doing different things. So we set up one SSH client. We set missing host key policy. What's that? So if you've never logged into a server before, and it, it, you, you have a little, sorry, <laughs> I should show you this manually. If we go to the .ssh directory, we have something here called known hosts. Those are places you've already logged into before. If you've never logged into somewhere and you try to do it via SSH, it'll say, hey, just FYI, you haven't added this in before. Is everything okay? Basically what we're saying is, yeah, we know we've never logged into this before. We don't care. Just let us log in. Then we connect. Here we need the name of the server. So we already know what that is. That's bandit labs that over the wire. The port, which is an integer, is 2220. The username is bandit0. And the password is exactly the same thing. We log in, we execute a command, and then we close standard input. Why do we close standard input? Because it's gonna keep waiting for us to input more stuff. When we have an SSH connection, we don't just run one command, we run this, man, I have some allergies here, sorry. I've been traveling lately. Anyway, uh, when we close, when we go, we log in, it's gonna ask for more input and that'll cause an error if we don't have additional input, okay? So we'll give it a command we'll read what we're supposed to do. So it just says to log in. If we go to the next level, level one, it says read the file, uh, sorry. Level zero to level one is to read a file called readme. So we'll just run cat readme. That'll run the command, but to access it, we'll need to print standard out. So obviously commands, when you run a command, it doesn't always get all the output right away. Sometimes it takes a little bit, right? This works like a file, so we'll have to use read to basically read from this, what's called a buffer, okay? So let's just see if this works at all. We'll run python3 on bandit.py, and it should give us the contents of readme. 
Right, I said standard out, it's called SSH standard out, that's what I call that variable. Uh, exec command gives us three things, it gives us input, so we could write to input to run additional commands, it gives us output, and it gives us error. So, wrong variable name. There we go, it gives us this byte string, and we can now actually decode that as UTF-8, because otherwise it's a byte string, and it doesn't know what the formatting of that string is. Is it ASCII, is it UTF? Is it some Russian thing from the 80s? Who knows, right? <laughs> yeah, and it gives us an extra new line. Why? Because when you do the cat command, cat reads what's in the file and then does a new line before giving you the next prompt. We can even get rid of that. I think in JavaScript it's called trim, but I think it's, I feel like it's not called trim in Python. That just gets rid of leading and trailing white space. <laughs> yeah, <str> haha, <laughs> it has no aspects trim. Did you mean strip? I did. So I'll get that. And there we go. Awesome. Yeah, that gives us exactly what we are going to want, right? Whew. Now, if we wanted to go to the next level, we have the password for the next level. Right? The password for the next level is stored in a readme. So if we wanted to access level two, we need to be the user... Um, we need to be the user bandit2, right? Well, in order to access the account bandit2, the password is gonna be this, the contents of this file. So rewriting all this SSH code, huh, that's gonna get old quick, right? Especially since a lot of the levels are just one command. So what can we do about that? Well, one thing we can do is basically make something to run a command on the server and get the output. That way we don't have to rerun this code for rewrite this code for every level since it's usually just the same thing. So we can just make something called like, you know, run bandit command. What do we need to know? The server name never changes, the port never changes. What does change is the level. Because the username is just bandit and then the level you're on. We need to know the level, the previous password. We'll call it previous pass. What I mean is the flag from the previous level is going to be the password here, which by default we'll set to bandit zero. Actually, we'll set it to none. And then you have the command you want to run, which by default will also be none. Now, instead of printing this, we can just return it. And I'll indent all of this. And now we can just say like, you know, level one pass equals run bandit command. The level is gonna be zero. All right. We'll have to change this. Actually, I can, I can have it be an integer. The way we'll do that is we'll just use an F string here and then we'll pass the level in. <laughs> Separate this to different lines because it's growing really, really big and we don't want that. And we will change this to previous pass. Oops. Okay, that is now previous pass. <laughs> And we just have to change this to be CMD. And beautiful, there we go. So, we'll start the level out at zero. The previous pass is gonna be bandit zero. And the command is gonna be cat readme. And then our level two pass would just be Our level is going to change to one. Username is going to change to bandit one. Sorry, our previous pass is going to change to level one pass. And now the command is going to be whatever the solution is, right? I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, the password for this next level is stored in a file called, oops, called dash located in the home directory. So we have to find this file called dash, which is hard because as you see right here, with no file, or when file is dash, read standard input. Uh-oh, 
<laughs> so this is a problem, right? It's saying, okay, if the file's name is dash, read from standard input instead. So, it, I'm sorry, not at the file. If the, if the parameter we give it is dash, so if you say cat dash, because you want to read the file dash, if you say cat dash, dash means read from standard input. So how do we find, a, how do we read from a file called dash? Yeah, that's going to be a challenge. In Python, that would be easy, right? You could just say open, you know, dash, and then like dot read, right? That'd be simple. But we're going to be running bash code over there, which means we have to be able to use this command. So that'll be, that's an interesting challenge. It's pretty tempting. I kind of want to solve it right now, but I don't want you to be stuck with me here forever. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I have some ideas, right? Let's, uh, let's go to that user's home directory. Let's go to bandit one. And I don't think this is readable by us anyway. So we'll actually have to log in. We're just logging in manually right now. And the reason we're doing that is remember, we, we, if, we, if we're still figuring out how to solve the challenge, first we go in manually. We go in manually, figure out how to do it, and then we code our solution. It's our way of taking notes. <laughs> Okay, I have the password from the previous level, and it worked. LS, we have our file called dash. I'm just gonna try to use cat to read everything. And no, apparently that didn't work. So very interesting challenge. Huh. Okay, I don't wanna take up too much of your guys' time. You've learned how to, how to script these things, but I know it's so fun that it's, it's hard to resist. So output F's contents, then standard input, then G's contents. I wonder if we were to do this. No. It's like, no, that's all standard input to me. Cat and tell it that dash is standard input. There we go. Whew, that was fun. So what does this solution do? What I'm saying is cat dash, so it's gonna read from standard input. Then I use the file redirect operator, which says, hey, what is standard input? Redirect it from the, from the contents of this file. And the file I give it is dash. Luckily, dash doesn't mean anything in bash. It's just a cat option. In bash itself, dash is just a normal character. And that gives us the file. Great, well, that's pretty easy. So what would we do at this point? We would go back into our code. I wasn't supposed to solve this level right now. I'm just having too much fun. So, So we run that, that gives us the level two pass, which we could just print at this point and stop. And we'll look at what level three is, but I have a, I have a time limit to these videos, so I don't wanna take up too much of your time. Okay, it's taking a while. It's never a good sign, but let's see if it can figure it out. There we go, wow, it ran, it took, it took a long time. Because, oh, I guess because it connected, then closed, then connected. In reality, what we should do is have this be like a class and have this connection be a constant, or we could have the we, we could have the connection be like con equals none. And then if con is none, we set up a new connection. Otherwise, we use the same existing connection. Okay, that would be the smart way to do it. Uh, apparently, I'm not smart because I didn't do it that way. No, I mean, obviously, we could make this better and better and better as we go. You know, right now, I'm just looking at it and giving you some basic ideas. But that is the correct password. From there we would go on to, we could go on to level three. You know, okay, it's stored in a file called spaces. That's even harder. I'm very curious how that works. <laughs> but the point is that, um, yeah, these are fun little challenges that just make you think about Linux, mess around with commands. There's many other things like this, but my point is just to show you that um, Scripting solutions like this is a great way to learn, especially if you go the next step and do what I said. We're like, oh, how do we share the connections across functions? Because this is what's gonna make you get better at programming, right? Saying, okay, con is none. Now we can set up a connection. Sorry, we can at least set up an SSH client and keep this constant, and we don't have to change this. We do have to set up a different connection because we're connecting as different users each time. So I would say like, I would say like SSH client equals none, right? And then, you know, change this to say SSH client. Yeah. And now what we could do is share the same SSH client. You know, that's something I'll go probably do in my free time because I really enjoy these challenges. But in your guys' case, I suggest you do things like that. Turn it into a class that runs the different levels. 
see how much more efficient you can make it. That's the goal. Uh, just mess around and have fun with Python and try to get better. Try to use interesting features. Try to optimize your code. Try to make it more elegant as you go, more readable, and then share it with other people. You know, um, even if you're just a newbie starting out and you're, you're saying, oh, I wanna get CTF experience, this is a great way to do it. Why? Because if you do a CTF, yeah, you learn some of them, like on Hack the Box, you get a profile, but this is something you can put on your GitHub and have Python code that you wrote showing how you solve them. You can put comments in here. They get to see that you're a strong coder and you become a stronger coder by doing it. So it's something I find very fun, no matter whether you're experienced, whether you're a newbie, there's challenges at every level and you can code it at your level. You can code it to be more advanced. You can code it in Rust, you can code it in a new language you're learning, or you can just use more advanced features of the language you already know to optimize it and make your solution really fancy and cool. So I appreciate your time, thank you so much. Uh, if it were up to me, I would probably do all of these challenges right now because I am addicted to CTFs and I wanna share that addiction with you guys, but I think I've given you the point and I appreciate your time so much. Thank you, goodbye.